In this video, I'll give an overview and demonstration of the Heathkit TC2 tube checker. The TC2 is an emission type tube tester, or checker, as Heathkit called the testers of this type, to distinguish them from the more accurate but expensive mutual conductance tube testers. My YouTube videos on the ICO 666 and Heathkit IT17 cover the theory and operation of tube testers. As the Heathkit TC2 is very similar to the IT17, rather than repeating much of the same information given in that video, I'll just give some highlights of this unit, explaining how it compares to other models, the history behind this particular unit, and give a short demonstration of tube testing. The TC2 was the second tube checker model that Heathkit offered. It followed the TC1 and is almost identical to it except for the styling of the front panel and knobs. The TC2 was sold from 1953 to 1959. It was replaced by the TC3 which was also almost identical. It was offered only as a kit. A 1958 Heathkit catalog lists the TC2 at a price of US $29.50. A portable model, the TC2P, was identical but featured a case with a lid and carrying handle. It sold for $34.50. The portable case could be purchased separately for $7.50. An adapter that allowed testing TV picture tubes was selling for $4.50. The front panel is similar to other tube testers of this type. It features a wooden case. Sockets are provided for nine types of tube bases, including four, five, six, and seven pin, large, regular, and miniature, octal, loctal, hytron, nine pin miniature, and pilot lamps. A spare socket was provided for future expansion. Heathkit offered a kit to put an acorn type tube socket in it. The plastic knobs are of the same type as a lot of Heathkit ham radio gear of the time. Some TC2 units have the older black chicken head knobs. There's a built-in illuminated roll chart. The tester can check for open and shorted elements, heater continuity, and quality or merit. It features a four and a half inch meter with a color-coded scale indicating if the tube is bad, questionable, or good. The inside is pretty standard, mostly consisting of switches, controls, and some passive components. It came with a pre-assembled wiring harness to simplify assembly. It uses the same copper oxide rectifier as most of the other Heathkit testers of the era. Now let's demonstrate testing a tube. After powering it on, we adjust the set line control to bring the meter to the line test indicator. This compensates for changing line voltage that can affect test results. Then the tube is looked up on the roll chart, in this case a 6BA6 pentode. We read off and set the tube type, 2, filament voltage, 6.3, plate setting, 23, levers at the top position, A, B, E, and F, and levers at the bottom position, D, and G. We insert the tube. and readjust the set line control again as the tube may have loaded down the circuit. To check for shorts, we move the levers indicated in the chart in light type to the other two positions. If the neon short lamp stays lit, it indicates a shorted element. We do that for levers A, B, E, F, and G. 
and no shorts are observed. Now we can perform the quality test by sliding the switch to the test position. This tube falls in the green scale so it looks good. Now we can check for open elements. While in the test position, we move each lever in the top position that's listed in light type to the bottom position and return. As we do so, we should see the meter reading drop. If not, the corresponding element may be open. Finally, to check for filament continuity, we set the filament voltage to 0.75 and move the levers shown in dark type through the other positions, in this case just lever D. We should see the neon short lamp illuminate if the filament is good. And we do. This unit was purchased in February 2014 from a seller on Kijiji along with a Heathkit GR54 shortwave receiver. The roll chart is dated 1162. It did not come with a manual, but I found several copies on the internet. Also available on the internet is supplementary test data for the less common tubes. One lever knob was missing, but I found one inside. These testers originally came with a couple of spare lever knobs. Some pieces of wood veneer from the case had come off. All of the pieces were there, and I glued them back on with wood glue. Over the years, some repairs had been made and possibly some resistors replaced. Someone had used scotch tape to insulate some wiring. I replaced it with electrical tape. It appears a mod was made by adding a resistor to the line adjust circuit. This was sometimes needed to compensate for today's higher line voltages. The neon short lamp appears to have been replaced by one without a plastic insert. It was glued in place. The wire for the grid cap connection was brittle and cracking, so I replaced it. The plastic roll chart window was coming loose. I glued it back on using Gorilla Glue. I gave the unit a good cleaning and cleaned the switch contacts and potentiometers. I tested a number of tubes of various types and the unit appeared to be working fine. I recently published a book on Heathkit equipment entitled Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. A chapter in the book covers tube testers and checkers like this one. If you're interested in vintage test equipment and or Heathkit, you may find the book interesting. It's available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95. The TC2 was one of a line of similar tube checkers offered by Heathkit. While tubes don't often fail in old equipment, if you do restoration or repair work, it's helpful to have a tube tester or checker, and units like this one could still be picked up for reasonable prices. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.